We are back, everybody, for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Big Tuesday edition, taking a look at some of the top veteran fantasy names in the game, 35 and older, injury news, big-time bets, and everything you need in between. Let's get right to it. You're Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back inside the lab, everybody, to the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen every single day. You know where to find us across all platforms. You find your favorite and hottest content, of course, for free. We are about the people steal. We are here to feed all of y'all with the fantasy news and takes that you need to stack that money. That's what we're about here, Steel. Picking winners and giving you some insight for your fantasy squad to take you over the top. We hope today's all about that. We got some Matt Barzal injury news. Just when the New York Islanders are starting to turn things around, Steel, and make some noise, it has fantasy implications for, I'm sure, a number of our listeners. We're going to get there right off the top. We're going to get to big-time bets, but smash in the middle, Steel. Another one of these great angles that you and I have to break down. Players, 35 or older, still getting it done in the league, and it's something that I want to talk to you about a lot on today's episode is, what do you do with some of these guys at this age of their career? It's a little bit of a volatile situation. We're going to get there. We're going to break that down. But honestly, Steele, man, this Matt Barzal news, the New York Islanders, that I don't know if they can even recover from this week to week. A little bit of a weird hit against the Boston Bruins. What's your take on this situation overall? And what do you think the value of Matt Barzal is? Now, he misses even a couple of weeks. This is going to be tricky to maneuver for GMs. Yeah, in in honest opinion, I think it's catastrophic for the New York Islanders season yeah. moving forward. I, they're in a very tough position, and I'm looking at it very at multiple angles right now. But it's the worst news possible for the New York Islanders, yeah. especially after going out and, and you know sending Bo Villier and Atu Ratu and swinging and for the fences, swinging for the fences, and, and landing Bo Horvat. And since they got Bo Horvat, they, they've been playing a lot better. Their power play was a lot better. The chemistry with Horvat Barzell. And uh, Brock Nelson on the top line, or Casey Zizekas, uh, is right there. It's undeniable that they already had a chemistry right off the bat. And the way that the Islanders are sitting right now in the NHL standings, they have the second wild card spot. Maybe not anymore because the Florida Panthers won. Yeah, it's fluctuating. Against. It's fluctuating. But as of right now, they are the second uh, second wild card spot in the Eastern Conference. They've also played the most games which doesn't go in favor uh, moving forward for the Islanders as well. You know, the teams ahead of them, the teams that are ahead of them in the Metro division, they're ahead in points and they've got four to five games in hand on them, as well as the teams that are behind them. The the Ottawa Senators are not out of the race. The Buffalo Sabres are not out of the race. The Detroit Red Wings are not out of the race whatsoever. And they also have four to five games in hand on the New York Islanders. Same goes for Washington and Florida. How about Uh, Buffalo too, right on the heels? Yeah, Buffalo, Ottawa, Detroit right on the heels or not out of the race mm-hmm. right now. It's mm-hmm. a terrible spot to be in because Barzell is now out indefinitely. Uh, Oliver Wallstrom is out for the, for the remainder of the rest of the season as well. Mm-hmm. JG Pajot is on the IR. He's missed the last four games. Cal yeah. Clutterbuck's been on the IR since mid January. You look at the bottom six uh, of their lineup right now, or even some guys that are filling in on the top six group yep. as well. It's just mumbo jumbo over there. It's it's all Mason jambled said. up, and and it's very just. It doesn't look good. It, the lines don't look good. No, it screwed up the chemistry that Horvat brought in, and now they got to readjust. They got to fix it, and it's going to be very very difficult for the New York Islanders to to to, to make a to remain in a playoff spot moving mm-hmm. forward. Yeah, and honestly, other than maybe Sorkin. I, this is just the most critical injury that could have happened to this team. Yes, and, yes. You know, he, we thought special things might happen with Horvat in the mix, and I know you called that early on. People were skeptical with Horvat coming in, what he could do. Barzal is just really the most critical offensive piece, and you said it. This team doesn't have any depth to fill in for this guy. That was their top piece, you know, other than Horvat, maybe Nelson, Anders Lee on a good day. They don't have the offensive talent steal, and now they're really up against it. And I think what this really does, though, last week you would have been really ready to go out there and get yourself a Bo Horvat. 
This is going to affect his ability to put up points down the stretch too. Obviously, Matt Barzal having a pretty good year, 14 goals. Maybe you want to see some more leading the team in 37 assists, 51 points. Just yeah. a really good player steal. This just hurts this team and so many good teams right there around them. You mentioned it. That's really all I have to say about this because it's just bad news bears for the New York <laughs> Islanders. Today's show, though, Steel, we're taking a look maybe the opposite end of the spectrum with Barzal. We're taking a look at guys 35 and older that are still yeah. bringing that effective fantasy <laughs> quality across the categories. Some of these guys I'm looking at, they do a little bit of everything well. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to kick it off with my honorable mentions very quickly because I think this is going to be a good conversation. Claude Giroux, Patrice Bergeron, and Brent Burns are all 35, 37, and 37 respectively. And all of these guys are having pretty good years at this age. Even Burns and Giroux, really good years. Bergeron, injury prone. These guys don't make my top five steal. We'll debate that. But what do you think about those honorable mentions? Any of those guys in your top five before we break down this list? Yeah, I've only got four players for 35 Perfect. years or older. But, yeah, actually two of them are on my list. I've got Patrice Bergeron and Claude Giroux on the list. You know, they Brent know. Burns was an honorable mention for me. I was looking at a couple of other guys. I think uh, I think you're going to like the four guys that I have on my list. But, yeah, either honorable mentions or they got to be in the top five because the way they're producing mm -hmm. right now and the way they're playing for their respective teams, is yeah. it, it's unbelievable at this age. And honestly, what I think is maybe potentially the most important takeaway of this conversation is you have to be very careful with the value of these players, especially if you're in a keeper dynasty league. You don't want to hold on to a guy too long if you think he's going to hit the decline. You don't want to give up on a guy too soon if you think he's still got it. And honestly, Steele, except for maybe one of these guys on my list, and I'll get there, I would be hanging on to almost all of them because they're still yeah. bringing it five on my list. And I'm fine with you not having a top five because it's not even a top five. These are just a bunch of guys who are still bringing it quality wise at their age. And I think you're going to like this first one. And his name is Joe Pavelski. I got to give the man. Yes. His due. He's 38 <laughs> years old. And Hey, we'll talk about hall of fame. We'll talk about whatever top tens we'll talk about. But if we're talking about the best players, 35 or older, still getting it done in producing, I can't come on here and pretend Joe Pavelski's not getting it done. So kudos to you for bringing him up. 14 goals, 36 assists for 50 points again this year, Steel. 81 <laughs> points the year before and 51 the year before that. Hey, even if he is getting a lot of love from that line mate crew, which I've said is a lot of his production, credit due to the guy at 38 years old still bringing it. He is number five on my list, or he's just in the top five of any of these age breakdowns. Yeah, you know, if I if I was if I had flat five players, he would have been in the five as there well. He is. And I didn't want to talk about Joe Pavelski. I had anymore. to bring him on here for you, pal. <laughs> of course, I lo absolutely love that. Thank you for bringing Joe Pavelski <laughs> into the conversation. But yeah, I didn't want to talk about him too much. I wanted to talk about a couple of players mm. that I haven't been able to, uh, you know, having a conversation with you that I haven't talked about a lot this year. Starting okay. off with my guy from the Minnesota Wild, Matt Zuccarello. Ooh. Unbelievable what he's doing right mm. now at the age of 35 years old. Mm. Um, he has been an absolute stud for the last four years for many. Um, he, he's actually gotten better over time as well, which is kind of hard to say for a lot of guys that are at this point in their stage. But he's gotten better since joining Minnesota. Uh, you know, good old days with the New York Rangers. But career high, 79 points last year in 70 games he has 56 points in 54 True. games this year Kaprizov obviously adds a lot to his uh production as well but it's really hit the vision that he has on the ice his capabilities mm. yeah. like I've mentioned so many times the capability of finding his line mates his teammates in, in the most obscure areas and threading the needle through sticks and skates all the time backdoor plays which is his bread and butter you know the patented, the patented shootout move where he goes out right and he just glides back into the middle and flicks it over top shelf over the glove. So, you know, 47% in shootout on 72 attempts in his career. One of the nice. best shootout players out there. Nice. Matt Zuccarello has to be on the list for me. He's a Minnesota guy. He plays for the Wild. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely adore that player. Mm. Uh, and I absolutely love him. 35 years old and still getting it done. And honestly, still where I'd throw him on another list is – underrated that yeah. guy is the definition of underrated because he just kind of goes about his business quietly and just i don't think i've ever even heard something 
out of Matt Zuccarello that I didn't love either on or off <laughs> the ice. So, you know, kudos to you. He doesn't make my list just because maybe I just missed the boat a little bit because he is that effective. 75 plus points last year too. You can't kid around with that. But at the top of my list are a couple of guys that I'll get to that they're just so good that they're still getting it done. And to me, their fantasy value is still through the roof. I got one more honorable mention that I missed as well. But we got to talk about FanDuel. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. We've hit the midway point of the NBA season, and it's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. New customers to FanDuel get a no-sweat first bet of up to $1,000. Just download the FanDuel Sports app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. And they let you bet on everything from the money line to point scores to threes drained. Steele and I love the prop bets. We like betting on the tip. We like betting on the first to 10 to 20 points. There are so many opportunities and options with FanDuel. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. Make sure you're checking out those same game parlays for boosted odds. Don't miss your chance for a no sweat first bet of up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com. Slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sports book of the NBA. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Don't forget, we are free and available on your favorite podcast platform and including YouTube. So make sure you hit the subscribe, you hit the follow button, you hit that alert button as well when episodes mm. drop Monday through Friday, seven o'clock in the morning, Eastern Time. Thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Let's continue on this conversation of veteran presence. Yes. Guys who are 35 years or older, still getting it done mm -hmm. in the NHL. And this next player that I have, uh, maybe not producing at the same level as uh -oh. the guys that are, or the rest of the guys that are on our list. But I think because of the career he's had and the, and the, the role he plays in, I threw him in this list because okay. of, of what he does. And that's Corey Perry of the Tampa Bay Lightning. 30, 37 years old, 11 Ooh. goals, 23 points on the season. Like I said, he's not producing like the other guys were mentioning. He's got no. 12 points on the power play, 86 mm -hmm. shots, 32 hits, 17 blocks. But he is a very valuable player come playoff time. You know, that's playoffs uh, playoffs for the actual season, not playoff for fantasy-wise. Yeah. But Thanks yeah, for that caveat. I appreciate that. Absolute beautiful player to have in the playoffs. He gets under your skin. He gets more physical, mm. parks his butt right in front of the net, and that's his bread and butter as well. He will antagonize you until you take a penalty on him, and then his team goes up one nothing, 2 nothing, and wins the game, moves on to the second round. That's just his game. I had to throw Corey Perry on here because he's just one of those guys, 37. He gets it done. Uh, still playing in the bottom six. So one of those guys that you can add up, uh, add on the waiver wire or off the waiver wire if you need a fill-in mm. player. Love the angle for, again, for the keeper dynasty side of things. When I talk about the three players that I have here, I can't even get mad at you for this take steal because he is really <laughs> still an effective fantasy piece. And sometimes, like the other night, he had two points and a bunch of penalty yeah. minutes. We've talked about the Banger League beauties. He could have been on that list too. And, you know, yeah, he's not bringing the caliber of the next three guys that I'm going to mention. And honestly, I, who, who else do you have left? Because we, we're missing out a couple <laughs> of major names here. You, how many, you got one left or was that it? I got, I, got, I got two players left, and it's Patrice Bergeron and Claude Giroux. So I'll talk about them a little bit. We've talked about Giroux a lot on mm -hmm. this podcast, but mm -hmm. those are my last two players. I'll talk, to the, I'll talk about them after your And you know what? Guy. Sometimes when we do these lists, guys are going to get left off, and it worked nicely yeah. today because I think we cover, I covered our bacon here. We can't talk about guys 35 and older in the league without mentioning Sidney Crosby and Alex Ovechkin. Yeah. We just seriously can't. And actually, what you were saying, though, I appreciate your list and your side of things because you're we're looking at it in different ways. And my last honorable mention, Ons Kopitar and Malkin. Yeah. Those two guys are still getting it done. Malkin is almost didn't even make my honorable mentions because of all of his injuries. And you look at when he's healthy, he's still there. But I needed to get his name in there <laughs> along with Kopitar. Look up the stats before you chirp. Sidney Crosby and Alex Ovechkin steal. Oh, my goodness me. And I know Ovi's going through the personal stuff. We talked about that. And we yeah. talked about injuries for Sidney Crosby. Crosby, 67 points this season. Ovi, 54 points this season. 35 years of age for Sid, 37 for Ovechkin. For me, Steele, at 34 years old, these are the two faces of the NHL for me. 
uh, that I'll always remember. And we just got to yeah. give them their love. They're still getting it done. And I alluded to the point off the top about what do you do with these pieces while they still so hold so much value teetering on the edge of the end of their career for me. And I'll hit you, hit me with your take. I'm going to hold on to both Ovechkin and Sidney Crosby for yeah. now heading into next season, monitor them closely because you could get a boatload of future talent and picks if you need to be in that position. So if you're owners of these players, this is my main point for today's episode, keep your eyes glued to what's going on with them and their teams so you can capitalize on the most return should you move on from these guys. Yeah, I think whenever we talk about players that are 35 years or old, they're mm. obviously those two guys have to be on the list yeah. because they have been the face of the NHL for so long now mm -hmm. that, of course, they have to be on the list. I was, again, doing a little bit of a different angle here with the 35 years and yeah. older. I didn't yep. want to, you know, go to the immediate obvious of Sydney. Less Crosby obvious for your list. Because, yeah, because those players, even though they're on the older side, you can they're still draftable in the top three rounds of any fantasy draft um, and will continue to be draftable in the in top three rounds for the next couple of years as well. They continue just to put up points. Can't say the same for Patrice Bergeron and Claude Giroux. I'm looking at where they were drafted in the three fantasy leagues that I was in. Both of them were in the middle of the rounds, 8, 9, 10, even 11 at times, 12 at the latest. Patrice Bergeron, 37 years old, 20 goals, 41 points, continues to get it done every time he steps on the ice. When he is healthy, him and David Pasternak, Brad Marchand, yeah. Charlie yeah. McAvoy, the, the Boston Bruins are just an elite team. Uh, it's you true. Know, you and I both thought that they were not going to be in the playoffs, and they end up being the best You're team right. in the NHL. And that's a yeah. lot to do with the leadership and the quality of play that the Boston Bruins get out of Patrice Bergeron. So he yeah. has to be on the list for me because... 1,000 points in his NHL it's career as well. Still. Absolutely incredible. But he has to be on the list because of the value he, the value he brings mm. and where mm. people drafted him at or his uh, average Good point. draft pick was as well. And then Claude Giroux has to be on here for me as well. Mm. 35 years old, 22 goals, 52 points. Signs that three-year deal with the Ottawa Senators. Right. And just what a great presence for the young guys on the team. Like that was the right move for the senators to go out and land him, mm -hmm. sign him to the contract that they did great contract. You got Brady Kachuk, Josh Norris, Drake Batherson, Tim Stutzla, and so Shane Pinto. So many other guys that can just look up to Claude Giroux and be, he can be their mentor. He can mm -hmm. establish himself as that leader and kind of father figure for these guys, uh, the young guys on the team but he's still getting it done offensively. The power play is absolutely incredible. The shot's yeah. still there. The snapshot's still there. Maybe not the skate so much, or maybe not the feet, but mm. he, he's an incredible player at 35 years old. Yeah, that's a common thread with a bunch of these guys here. And even, you know, yeah. looking at, this is kind of what spurred this conversation on, is seeing Eric Stahl getting it done. You mentioned maybe a week or two I was going to mention him on the list as take well. A look. He had a, he had 11th yeah, goal, take so. a look at Eric Stahl for a waiver wire fill-in. Eric Stahl, again, I think that's like kind of very perfect. Hands are still Stahl money. brothers scored yesterday. Eric That was Mark weird. Stahl. Yeah, very <laughs> weird. But yeah, hands still money, skates and body maybe not keeping up. <laughs> Lots of fantasy value to be had with a number of these pieces. It depends on the format you're in. That's yeah. why you keep it tapped to this podcast. Steal big time bets on the way. I'm ready for it. Let's get it. We're both ready for it. I am very excited to see mm. what your three picks are for the <laughs> nine game board on Tuesday. But before we get there, we got to talk about our sponsors, Athletic Greens. Our next partner has a product that you we literally use every single day. I started taking AG1 because I wanted more energy, especially in the morning, very groggy when I wake up. And I also hated taking pills and vitamins. It just sucked. I hated that. So I wanted to see what all the hype was about with AG1. With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamin, vitamins, minerals, whole, fo whole food source, superfoods, and probiotics. To help you start your day. That's why I take it right in the morning because it helps me start my day. And the special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and even your aging. There's just so many things that AG1 does. And Athletic Greens was created when the founder experienced a ton of gut health issues and ended up on a very, very complicated supplement routine to recover. And it was costing him over $100 a day. It, that is just a very absurd price. And Athletic Greens AG1 is the right price for you and helps you get your day started. 
Right now, it is time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in water every single day. I take it in the morning. That's how I like to start my day. And there's no need for all these different million pills and supplements to, to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. I'll say that one last time. It's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Don't forget, we are free and available on your favorite podcast platform, including YouTube. So hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. And we are also partnered and a, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. We talk about all teams here, though. We talk about mm-hmm. all the bets, player props, yep. lines, puck line, flip, nine games on the schedule for Tuesday night. There's a lot of juicy matchups. I'm not going to lie. I like I a agree. lot of these matchups. I have three that I, you know, I'm keeping it a little bit simple, but I like mm. these three picks. So I'll mm, I like, so, I mean, hey, sorry. Sometimes you got to keep it simple with that many games, Steel. My bad yeah. for cutting you off. You got to put the blinders on, my friend. Where are you looking first, though? I'm excited. Exactly. Okay. okay, I'll start off first. I'll start off first. I think this is a very, very important game for the Edmonton Oilers. It's a very Ooh. important game. We've yeah. talked about the race in the, uh, the wild card and even the top three in the, in the Pacific division or central division. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers need to continue getting some wins. And uh, the goaltending, you and I have been back and forth with the goaltending situation. Mm-hmm. I don't believe it's still there yet. Mm-hmm. Very up and down from both Stuart Skinner uh, and uh, Jack Campbell. Obviously, Stuart Skinner's played better. But it's a very important game. The Flyers on a second game of a back-to-back. They played Mm -hmm. the Calgary Flames the day before. They're going to be a little bit tired. Carter Mm -hmm. Hart's going to be in net. I think Mm -hmm. this is going to be a big win for the Oilers. I've got Oilers on the money line for my first pick of the night. I agree with you that this is a big game for the Edmonton Oilers. And honestly, looking at it, we talked maybe a week or two ago about teams that need to make a move. And I think I had, we both had them on the list. To me, now they're right at the top after seeing just this blue line needs help. And I understand their their hands are tied with the goaltenders. They're going to have to go with those two guys or one of them. To me, it has to be additions on the blue line, maybe a fourth liner with a bit of upside. I don't know, but it's got to start on the blue line. So yeah, I'm with you, Steele. I think that they're teetering on the brink here of really what do you do at this deadline? Do you become major buyers or do you just stand pat? That even makes it more important of a game. And yeah, the Philadelphia Flyers, though, did look pretty good against the Calgary Flames on Monday. But I'm with you. And I, this is obviously the better team. So I like this angle. With this many games, steal. I tried to really, like, you said play it simple or keep it simple. I'm trying to focus in on some good situations. And when I take a yeah. look at Toronto heading into Buffalo after, you know, really a tough performance against the Chicago Blackhawks. Yeah. I think this Toronto Maple Leafs team is for real. And that's not a bold take. They have what it takes to go on a run. Is Samson, is Samsonov going to be able to do it? Are they going to add another blue line? Lots of questions. But for me right now, this is a huge game for the Buffalo Sabres and the Leafs. The Leafs can't afford to slip below the Tampa Bay Lightning in the standings. And I think you're going to see a big bounce back perform- performance. Austin Matthews has looked really good over the last couple of games. Yeah, maybe he was a bit more invisible against the Blackhawks. But in 12 career games against Buffalo in his career, sorry, 20, he has 12 goals. I'm going Austin Matthews anytime goal steal. I think he's going to respond. I think the whole team is going to respond. Good track record against the Sabres who allow a bunch of goals, a lot of shots on net. Leafs on the road, good spot. Am I going to bet on them? Maybe, but I'd rather bet on one of the best, maybe yeah. the best goal scorer in the NHL still. We'll go there. Matthews, anytime goal, that's my first bet. I'll also take Austin Matthews anytime goal. I think I would stay away from the money line or puck line in this matchup just Me because too. I Most still game. think, yeah, close game, but I think the Leafs are still trying to figure out the lineups right now mm. with Brian O'Reilly mm. and Nola Charlie. Good point. So, could be a little bit of a learning curve. Stay away from the money line if you Good feel point. like it. But Austin Matthews, anytime goal, I am here for that. Now that I'm looking at the schedule again, I'm going to add this into my three picks as well. So I've yes. got four picks now. I think it's a great, great time to take the Lightning on the puck line against the Anaheim Ducks. Mm. The Ducks, 
you know, gave up a 3-1 lead against the Florida Panthers. They lost to the Florida Panthers in overtime. They're playing a back-to-back as well. Lightning on the puck line against the Anaheim Ducks. Mm. My third pick, Predators on the money line against the Vancouver Canucks as well. Mm, okay. I, this is a very, very important stage of the Nashville Predators season right now. It's, you know, we're right. getting down to the NHL trade deadline. They still don't know if they're going to become buyers or sellers. It depends mm. where they are in the standings right now. For sure. 54 games played, 58 points on the season. They are currently seven points back mm. of the Minnesota Wild for the last wild card spot. They have a couple games in hand, but they need to win games against the bottom tier teams. Needs to start Tuesday night against the Vancouver Canucks. And my lock of the night, Hurricanes on the money line against the St. Louis Blues. I don't think anything really has to be said there. St. Louis Blues are sellers. They're sell- they've yeah. already sold Achari, O'Reilly, Tarasenko. You got the young guys, Cairo and Thomas, to hold on to, but Bennington's been a roller coaster ride. I, I just don't think they have it in it. And the Hurricanes yeah. are a better team. So those are my four picks Oilers, money line, Predators, money line, Lightning, puck line, and Hurricanes, money line for the lock of the night. Nice little segue into my second pick and someone that I haven't talked about in a while because I've been trying to shy away from his <laughs> not so good season that I predicted a really good one for him. And he still got 27 points, but he's coming off a hat trick steal. And Seth Jarvis's numbers around scoring, okay. Yeah, he's gone pointless before that hat trick game for a number of games. His ice time is creeping up and up and up. And his most recent game, I believe, let me just check this. I swear it was almost 20 minutes, 19 minutes and 33 seconds of ice time. That tells me he's starting to figure it out. And also, his combination on that top line with Sveshnikov and Sebastian Ajo. It can't be ignored. And when I take a quick look into it, playing those blues you mentioned, not doing so well. And oh, wait, in his three career games against the blues, how about a goal in each one of them? He likes playing against the blues in a small sample size. Yeah, Flip, I know it's three games, but I'll take it. A guy who I really, really like, and I'm going to keep going to him when I can steal. Seth Jarvis, anytime goal versus the St. Louis Blues, you're going to get a juicy odd for it too. Yes. That's my second pick, and my lock of the night is a team that, honestly, I don't think I've bet on one single time on this show steal. The Montreal Canadiens look garbage. I mentioned I was in the building on Saturday. They yeah. are going to get completely obliterated by the New Jersey Devils. Jack Hughes is back and healthy. They're starting to score goals. And how about this? The New Jersey Devils have points in nine of 10 games against this Montreal team, including eight wins. Puck line, Devils, plus 125. I love the odds at home. They are going to destroy Montreal. That's my lock of the night. Absolutely love it. Yeah, I remember the time when they were on that 13-game winning streak, and you and I were just, we would refuse to bet on the Devils. No, they're going to lose. They're going to lose. And it didn't pan out that way. So here we go. does. Hopefully it does Tuesday night. First bet on the New Jersey Devils for the lock of the night. Thank Mm -hmm. you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Once again, we are available Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning Eastern time on your favorite podcast platforms, including YouTube. Hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. We appreciate all the love, all the support our listeners show us every single day. And thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode with Flip and I. Have a great day. Good luck with all your bets out there. And we shall see you back here again tomorrow. Peace.